Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in this tutorial we will discuss about data marting. In the previous lecture we have discussed about the metadata and the different categories. So in this lecture we will go through the data marting technique in the data warehousing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before going into detail, first we need to get clear about what is a data mart. So I have covered this topic in the previous tutorials in our data warehouse series that I will link in the description below. So what is a data mart? Data mart is nothing but a subset of a data warehouse which is usually oriented to a specific business need or a team. So what do you mean by that? Let's consider the manufacturing industry it will require the different data marts to store the different departmental data. So let's consider there are so much departments such as quality control, production department, sales and marketing department, research and development department and so on. So each department will require their own data marts which can contain the specific data or information related to that department. So this strategy is very simple. But why do we need the data mart? That we will discuss now. So the first point is to partition the data in order to impose access control strategies. So what we will do is we will partition the data according to the different departments as we have seen in the previous example of a manufacturing firm. The next one is to speed up the queries by reducing the volume of data to be scanned. Let's again consider the same example of a manufacturing industry. So if the business needs data about the manufactured products, so it will only require the production department data. So that will mean it will speed up the query by reducing the volume of data to be scanned. So it will only scan production department data mart instead of scanning the whole data warehouse. So this is very huge benefit. The next one is segment the data into different hardware platforms. And the last point is to structure the data in a form of suitables for a user access tool. So we will structure the data in such a way that the data which will be consumed by the end user will be as convenient for the analysis purpose. But as you know that there are different advantages of a data mart, you have to remember one point clearly. We should not data mart for any other reasons since the operation cost of a data marting can be very high. So before data marting, we have to make sure that the data marting strategy is appropriate for the particular business solution. So this point we should keep in mind every time you are using the data marting technique. So as of now we have discussed what is a data mart and why it is very necessary. So now let's discuss about the cost effective data marting technique. So there are three steps we need to follow for making the data marting more cost effective. The first one is identify the functional splits. So what do you mean by that? So in this step we determine if the organization has a natural functional split. So we will look for the departmental splits and we determine whether the way in which departments use the information tend to be in the isolation from the rest of the organization. So we will discuss this with a simple example. So this diagram will show you the data marketing for different user. So we will take an example of a financial data warehouse which contains all the financial data. So on this we can split up the data on the basis of the assets and the liabilities and also the accounts payable and accounts receivable. So the accounts payable will contain the data for the transaction that the company has to do for their debt which contains in the liabilities and the account receivable will contain the data for which the company has to receive from the vendors and this data will be consumed by the business analyst for creating the balance sheet of a company. So we will split up the data according to the each entity but there are some disadvantages for determining the functional split. The first is the structure of a department may change. The next one is the products might switch from one department to another. So this also might happen and the merchant could query the sales trend of other products to analyze what is happening to the sales. So this could be the different disadvantages of this technique. But we have to remember one thing clearly. 
we need to determine the business benefits and technical feasibility of using a data mart so the first and the most important thing is we have to determine what benefits we are giving to the business by creating this data mart then we can follow this technique so the next step for a cost effective data marting is identifying user access tool requirements so what do you mean by that so we need the data marts to support user access tools that required internal data structure so the data in such structures are outside the control of a data warehouse but needs to be populated and updated on a regular basis so there are some tools that populate directly from source system but some cannot directly populate them so therefore additional requirement outside the scope of the tool needed to be identified for future so you have to remember that in order to ensure consistency of data across all the access tools the data should not directly populated from the data warehouse rather each tool must have its own data mart so this is very important our next step is identifying the access control issues so there should be privacy rules for ensuring the data which is accessed by authorized users only so only the authorized users should be allowed to access the data so for example the data warehouse for retail banking institution ensures that the accounts belongs to the same legal entity so the privacy laws can force you to totally prevent access to the information which is not owned by the specific bank so this is very important for creating the privacy rules on the data and limiting the access according to the requirements of a user so the data marts allows us to build a complete wall by physically separating the data segments within the data warehouse so to avoid possible privacy problems the detailed data can be removed from the data warehouse so we can create the data mart for each legal entity and load it via data warehouse so this was all about designing a cost effective data mart our next topic is designing the data marts so the data marts should be designed as smaller version of a starflex schema within the data warehouse and should match with the database design of a data warehouse so it will help in maintaining control over the database instances so here is one example for a simple design of a data mart where we have created three data marts for three different departments according to the business benefits and the requirements of a users who are consuming the data for the business analysis purpose so the last but not least cost of data marting so the everything comes with a cost so we will now discuss the different cost measures for the data marting first one is hardware and software cost it is very major cost so although the data marts are created on the same hardware they will require some additional hardware and software to handle user queries it will require additional processing power and the disk storage so if the detailed data and the data mart exist within the data warehouse then we can face additional cost to store and manage replicated data so the one thing you need to clear is data marting is very expensive than the aggregations therefore it should be used as an additional strategy and not as alternative strategy so the next cause is network access so the data marts could be on different locations from the data warehouse so we should ensure that lan or wan whichever we are using has the capacity to handle the data volumes being transferred within the data mart's load process and the last cost is time window constraint so the extent to which a data mart loading process will eat into the available time window will be depend on the complexity of the transformation or the queries and the data volumes which are being shipped so the determination of how many data marts are possible will be depend on the network capacity time window available volume of the data which is being transferred and the mechanisms which are being used 
for inserting the data into data mart so these will aspects will decide for how many data marts are possible so this was all about the cost of data marting so in this video we have seen what is a data mart why do we need a data mart also we have seen the different steps for cost effective data marting and at the last we have seen the cost of data marting with their different measures in detail so if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to get the latest updates thanks for watching